Hello, and welcome to the latest edition of the 2013 VMware End User Computing webinar series. Uh, my name is Andy Philp, EMEA Product Marketing Manager for End User Computing at VMware, and it's my pleasure to present this webinar around Windows 7 XP migration. In this webinar, we introduce VMware Mirage, uh, a recent addition to the End User Computing portfolio at VMware and describe how its innovative and straightforward uh, architecture delivers the benefits and efficiencies of centralization, but with full support for a local and offline execution, making this an ideal solution for any PC user, including those who use laptops from remote locations. Uh, with Mirage, you can bring the operational advantages of centralized management that VMware is already known for through VMware View to the full population of your PC users. Uh, next, we focus on a critical use case requirement that VMware Mirage addresses, uh, Windows 7 deployment. Uh, we believe this is going to resonate very strongly with you. And then we briefly touch on some of the other use cases um, and finally describe how Mirage complements the overall end user computing vision at VMware. Um, so let's get going. So Windows 7 was released to the public in 2009. So four years on, uh, according to ZDNet, XP accounts for around 40% of installed desktops. So what reasons are there for this lag in the adoption of Windows 7? Well, first we have downgrade rights. When Windows 7 was first released, purchasing a device with Windows 7 installed gave the right to downgrade the device to Windows XP and still be licensed. As drivers were readily available for new hardware platforms well after 2009, and the fact that applications continue to be released supporting XP, this enabled customers to stick with their existing XP images and deploy the latest hardware. Applications and the complexity around them were the second factor. Before any user can be moved from XP to another platform, all of the applications that are used in the enterprise must be first identified. Then IT must understand which of those applications are being used and by whom. And then the real hard work begins of packaging suitable equivalents for the new operating system. This was and still is not a trivial exercise. Finally, there comes the actual act of migrating users from Windows XP onto the new operating system. Providing an automated mechanism for doing this is extremely complicated using traditional tools and typically requiring significant investment in terms of time, money, and resources. So to summarize, a good way to look at the problem of XP migrations uh, and the tools to use is to look at the cost-benefit ratio in terms of end users. So when all is said and done, what really do the users get? Simply put, end users get a new start menu, a new off version of Office, email, browsers, etc. Uh, the point being that the user is suddenly not more effective at their job or more productive due to the fact that they've moved from Windows XP to Windows 7. Windows 7, in many cases, represents a new interface that the user has to learn, but with little or no gains in terms of productivity. At the same time, IT is put under huge strain to deliver an effective migration strategy consisting of infrastructure investments, deep complexity in terms of processes to drive the migration project, and then finally, the added risk to the primary currency of any IT department, which is user productivity. The move from Windows XP to Windows 7 is a migration, it's not an upgrade. Therefore, the risk of data loss and disruption to end users is very high. Therefore, business continuity is a key concern and a potential cost. So this mismatch of cost and risk versus end user benefit has driven many organizations to put off the move away from Windows XP. However, you know, this inaction is no longer impossible, is no longer possible. On April the 8th, 2014, Microsoft ceases extended support for Windows XP, resulting in no more security patches being publicly available and the platform being unsupported from Microsoft in the event of an issue. On top of this, other software vendors will start to see support for Windows XP due to it not being a supported platform from Microsoft. So in reality, this means that users who remain on Windows XP as a platform will be subject to your business to significant risk. Windows 7 migrations are putting traditional Windows management tools and processes to the test. And in many cases, these migration projects are shedding light on the need to find a new and more innovative approach to delivering Windows to end users. So in terms of your options, well, the first option that you may have is to ignore the end of support for Windows XP. From April 19th, uh, April 9th, sorry, any security flaw in Windows that is exploited will not be addressed by Microsoft. 
Unscrupulous hackers may have already identified vulnerabilities and are waiting for that date before unleashing them on the world. If your business is subject to any form of compliance, then most likely this is not the best option for your business. If you need to stay in Windows XP, it's possible to pay for support directly from Microsoft at a significantly increased cost. Paying inflated support costs may give you peace of mind, but justifying this cost to the business will be extremely challenging, especially as Windows 7 has been available for so long. Another approach is to use the natural attrition of hardware to address the move away from Windows XP. Your organization may have a standard five-year attrition plan where each year 20% of laptops are refreshed. This represents a good opportunity to switch the operating system as part of the move away from XP. Uh, in fact, some users running old hardware with insufficient disk, RAM, or CPU to support Windows 7, this is actually the only option they have. So this approach, however, does not guarantee all user data is saved, and your refresh plan must be suitably mature to fill everyone by April the 8th. If your business does not have the budget to migrate everyone before April the 8th, then this option will not cover everyone clearly. The final option available to you is to migrate the user to a new instance of Windows, typically Windows 7, uh, and as previously discussed, this is not a trivial exercise. IT is subject to additional cost, strain, and user pro user's productivity is put to risk, thus putting the business continuity directly at stake. So these three simple questions summarize the biggest challenges our customers are facing. Firstly, how can IT m complete migrations on time and on budget with the resources that they have available? Secondly, when they do have problems, how do they easily get back into a productive state? And number three, um, where I have remote users and locations, how can I migrate those users without making more infrastructure investments and wasting more time with hands-on processes? So when we speak to our customers, they tell us that they see themselves as being on a journey. Typically, addressing physical devices is the first step on that journey, as this is still the dominant form factor on which IT delivers end user experiences on today. Where appropriate, our customers look to centralize desktop images and offer them as a consumable service from their cloud, opening up access to Windows desktops from a multitude of end-user devices while securing important data. Um, the reality is that VDI is not a suitable use case for all users uh, all of the time. And so the management of physical Windows-based devices will remain an important part of IT strategy for a long time to come. Users today are increasingly using multiple devices to access resources. So the need for a multi-device workspace is very much a reality in 2013. The ultimate aim is to take the core constituent parts of what makes a user productive, namely applications and data, decouple them from the specific operating system, and then offer them as a secure, identity-driven, consumable service across all devices, whether they be Mac, Windows, iOS, Android, or pretty much anything else. VMware is delivering on that vision through its EUC portfolio consisting of three major product innovations. VMware Horizon Mirage for physical device management, VMware Horizon View for offering Windows desktops as a cloud service, and finally, Windows uh, VMware Horizon Workspace, the switchboard of the Horizon Suite, offering a single point of management for IT and a single point of entry for users to access all of their resources, regardless of their device. VMware delivers this entire vision and journey through an integrated suite providing the platform for workspace mobility. Horizon View simplifies physical desktops uh, management and applications by virtualizing them, lifting them off the endpoint hardware and running them as virtual machines in the data center. By doing this, both desktops and data are securely located in the data center or cloud behind the corporate firewall. The new centralized location of the virtual desktops also makes them easier to manage and support, greatly reducing the total cost of ownership. Because the virtual desktops are actually running back in the data center, they can be delivered to any endpoint device running Windows or otherwise by optimized display protocols and native clients on web browsers running on the endpoint. This is a huge benefit of VDI, device-independent mobility. A virtual desktop solution won't be appropriate for every use case in the organization, however. There will be users who need to use a high-performance endpoint device for application reasons, or who actually spend more time working off the network than on. 
And for users like this, a better managed physical desktop solution, such as physical PC managed by Horizon Mirage, is much more appropriate. Nevertheless, Horizon View is the best solution out there for many users in the organization that require the highest levels of security and or device independent ability. So in this session, uh, the remainder of the session, I'm going to focus now on VMware Horizon Mirage, VMware's very innovative solution for physical device management, and talk about how we've satisfied a number of key use cases for our customers. So Horizon Mirage enables IT to do three things with their population of physical Windows PCs. Firstly, it simplifies Windows physical image management by centralizing the Windows images into the data center. Secondly, the management of those Windows images can be carried out centrally via a single administration console, and the deployment of those images to end users are then acted very quickly and easily achieved with just a few mouse clicks. Finally, where appropriate, Horizon Mirage empowers your workforce to, be, to use all of their native power and performance of their local PC because the image is executed locally, whether the device is on the network or off. If you scratch the surface of a Windows PC, it becomes clear that the user's Windows environment is not a nebulous object, but rather consists of many discrete objects. The operating system, applications IT has deployed, user data, device drivers, perhaps applications the user has installed on customized settings. All of these things come together to make a user's personal experience of a Windows PC. So any system that is to offer IT management and user freedom needs to recognize these discrete elements. We can categorize these elements into two categories. Firstly, the elements that IT needs to control, such as configuration and the security posture of the operating system, core application that the users get, and device-specific drivers. IT needs to be able to ensure that the device is at the right patch level and that the core applications are at the right versions which have been tested by IT and then delivered in the right way for the users to consume. Secondly, as users are used to a certain level of freedom and control with their mobile devices, users want to be able to manage their own data and, where appropriate, install additional applications they may need, all whilst customizing the look and feel of their environment. So in some situations, users may have less freedom to enact on their device, but the desire is still there. So how does IT maintain control over the parts it needs whilst allowing users, where appropriate, to customize their own environment? Horizon Mirage acknowledges this and offers a layered approach to image management. Um, how does it work? Well, firstly, each instance of Windows that you want to manage has the Horizon client installed to it. Horizon Mirage client first scans the local copy of Windows to identify and model the device into logical layers. Once the endpoint has been scanned, Horizon Mirage centralizes an entire copy of the endpoint back to the data center, providing a complete backup of the endpoint which is defined by a number of layers that can then be managed independently. This backup process is continuous, efficiently keeping track of all changes that occur on the PC as the user makes them, and at the same time, IT assigns layers that are then downloaded back to the device. Horizon Mirage logically layers Windows so IT can replace or update the layers that it cares about without affecting any user personalization on the device. Even if IT does not provide users the ability to install their own applications, the users will still personalize their own device by updating files, updating application settings, and potentially operating system settings. Mirage gives IT the flexibility to control the layers that they care about, enforcing the required security standards but leave the user free to customize their device to the level that's appropriate. Through logical layering, IT can then provision new operating systems, deliver service packs and additional applications once in the data center and have those changes automatically delivered to PCs without affecting the layers the user cares about. In a similar fashion, Horizon Mirage can quickly restore user personalization back to a different instance of Windows running on a different device in the event of a hardware failure, therefore getting the user up and running very, very quickly and very efficiently. Finally, if the user is due to receive a new PC, IT can take all of the layers and deliver them efficiently to the new user's device, thus giving them the exact experience they had before with all the files exactly where they left them, all independent of the hardware. So no more need for the user to spend half a day or a day getting their new system back to how they want it with all their data in the right place. 
So earlier I mentioned that Mirage centralizes a complete backup of everything on the end user's PC. Now at first, this might suggest that Horizon Mirage will consume significant network bandwidth and storage, but this isn't the case. Horizon Mirage introduces two innovations in this area. Firstly, Horizon Mirage implements storage deduplication, and by that I mean that a given file is only stored in a data center once across multiple endpoints. So rather than storing multiple copies of a Windows system file, something that will exist on every device, Horizon Mirage only stores the file once and records its existence for the other endpoints. For larger files, Mirage also implements block-level deduplication, such that if a big file is changed, Mirage will only store the differences that have occurred. In conjunction with file and block-level storage deduplication, Horizon Mirage also offers network deduplication. Mirage is very intelligent in what it transfers back to the data center and will only upload a given file from any device once. So for example, if you have 1,000 Windows XP laptops, the first laptop will centralize and upload all the files to the data center. And typically, this will be staged by IT and performed locally to the corporate network. When the remaining devices start the centralization process, during the scan phase I talked about earlier, Horizon Mirage detects that a copy of Windows XP has already been centralized and will only therefore upload their differences. The same version of a file exists on multiple devices, such as a shared document, presentation file, or application installation files. Mirage will only upload these once. Any changes made by the user are isolated, and only the changes at a block level are sent back to the data center. And on top of this, all transfers are compressed. So Horizon Mirage is, is very efficient over wide area networks in relation to traditional tools. And it's very efficient in terms of image storage as well. So the Horizon Mirage server itself is very quick and easy to set up. And it can scale to uh, approximately 1,500 or 1,000 PCs, depending on load. Uh, as Horizon Mirage, Mirage is only storing static images, there's no real execution happening on the images in the data center, like in a VDI use case. Uh, so this simple yet powerful infrastructure, coupled with intelligent deduplication, means that Horizon Mirage offers high server dens density in terms of the devices that can connect to the Mirage server. So this low impact, low, input, low footprint architecture can then expand easily as demand increases to support approximately 20,000 devices by clustering the Horizon Mirage service. So in the case of uh, remote or branch locations, no additional dedicated infrastructure is required for deployment at these locations. So typically, solutions such as PC lifecycle management solutions require dedicated server class hardware to localize services for endpoint management. Horizon Mirage uses a branch reflector approach to aggregate the downloads at each location for more effective transmissions. Any device running the Horizon Mirage client can be nominated centrally as a branch reflector and then becomes a staging area for image delivery. Any devices local to the branch reflector are then assigned and the layer will download locally across the LAN. With this approach, our customers have experienced the exceptionally reduced WAN transmissions, um, all without the need of dedicated hardware and being able to promote devices as branch reflectors centrally and remotely means that this reduces the need to send engineers out to sites to support the migration process. On top of, um, we talked about layering earlier. I just want to focus a little bit on application layering. Uh, application layering allows IT to create different application layers for different sets of users, such as a specific job role or department. And this makes it very easy to provision users with applications based on their role without having to manage multiple OS images. For ongoing management, IT can update an application layer and then distribute that update to all of the devices that currently have that assigned. The application layers are separate from the operating system layer, and both can therefore be managed in isolation. Horizon Mirage application layers uh, work both natively installed applications and also with virtual applications, such as those created with uh, VMware's ThinApp offering. And therefore, we uh, give you complete flexibility in how you want to deliver applications to end users. Um, if we focus a little bit on ThinApp, um, ThinApp is an agentless application virtualization solution that can be used to deliver virtualized applications for virtual or physical desktops. Uh, ThinApp doesn't have any complex agents to deploy or maintain, so IT isn't burdened with additional footprints to maintain or install. 
Uh, Synapse does not require additional servers or infrastructure. You simply package your applications and, and use your existing management frameworks to deploy and manage the Synapse virtualized applications. So the way it works is Synapse encapsulates each application and all of the components required to run it in an isolated container. User-specific configurations and changes are stored in their own unique sandbox. Typically, that's on the server, or the actual user's PC, or maybe even the USB stick. Uh, and thin-app applications can be linked together to have multiple applications share independent components like Java or, or .NET. So this ability keeps the package size small and eliminates the restrictions and dependencies that you may face based on uh, the vendors that you deal with and the applications you're trying to put to your users. VMware's unique approach allows end users to run multiple versions of the same application, like Microsoft Office or different web browsers, side by side without conflicts because the reuse resources are unique to each application and are stored within their own container, their own .exe. So Synapse runs in 100% user mode to enable IT, if appropriate, to lock the device down from the PC, uh, but allow the user to run any application that they need to. Um, in addition, uh, one thing to also note is that Synapse and Fusion 5 Professional are included with Horizon Mirage. Uh, so when uh, any customer buys that product, they have the ability to virtualize Windows applications, and they get licensed for uh, Fusion 5 Professional, uh, which allows your business uh, to very easily deliver offline access to Windows applications on the Mac platform. Um, VMware Fusion 5 Professional supports BOD programs by including the award-winning VMware player. So this allows us firstly to create Windows images and run them locally on Mac devices with Fusion 5 Professional, but also those images can then be executed locally on Windows or Linux devices using the VMware player. And the VMware player, again, is licensed as part of this package. The inclusion of VMware 5 Professional allows IT to extend the delivery of Windows environments to Apple users, all whilst controlling the experience of what's happening in Windows with Horizon Mirage. This is the same as, um, so you're managing one place and you're delivering natively to physical PCs and also to virtualized Windows that may be running on Windows, Linux, Linux or Mac. So this really represents total control from an IT perspective and from the end users that gives them complete freedom of whether they want to use Windows or the Apple platform. So Mirage offers a new alternative. So VDI manageability, but with local execution and very efficient network and storage utilization. Centralizing and intelligently layering Windows in this way allows Mirage to address some key pain points for our customers. So the ability to automate the deployment of operating systems remotely without dedicated infrastructure means Horizon Mirage is a very effective tool for Windows XP to seven migrations. And we'll explore this a bit later. As a complete backup of each endpoint is maintained by Horizon Mirage, users are safe in the knowledge that all of their data and applications are safe in the hands of IT and are readily available if their device becomes unusable. Migrating users uh, to new hardware is also very simple with Mirage, getting users productive very, very quickly, giving them the, the experience they had before but on the new hardware. In the event of a user having an issue and they call support, a level one support person can now enforce a known standard on the OS and core applications and then bring the PC back to a working state, all whilst maintaining any of the user customizations that may have occurred. So this means problems can be solved very quickly without ex very expensive escalations to level one, level two, level three support. Now the level one support guy can fix a Windows device by bringing it back to a known state, but leaving their uh, customizations intact. The core use case for Horizon Mirage is central image management. IT can make changes and set a standard once, and this standard is then enforced uh, rigorously on all of the devices under management, but leaving the user personalization intact. So for the end user, it's business as usual. Um, for IT, it gives them flexibility and control over making users productive. So as we discussed earlier, inaction around moving away from Windows XP uh, isn't really an option. So now we want to talk about specifically how Horizon Mirage can help you address this problem. So migrating users from Windows XP to Windows 7 is actually a multi-stage project with many inputs. So this diagram represents a high-level overview of the steps involved in delivering a typical Windows 7 migration project. 
The term migration is important as Microsoft does not provide a formal upgrade mechanism to get users from Windows XP to Windows 7. So inevitably, this means that each device must be reset to run Windows 7. So first, IT has to understand what the current device estate looks like in terms of the hardware and the applications that are installed and being used by users. Uh, application compatibility is a key concern at this stage, as most applications will be need, to, need to be repackaged or virtualized to function reliably on Windows 7. Before a migration takes place, the user data must be backed up, and this is essentially important for roaming laptop users, where they may never or only very rarely connect to the corporate network. These users will potentially have thousands of files on the local disk that must not be lost during a migration for any reason. The new operating system must be deployed, and then the device will typically go through a, a build process which names the device, registers it to a domain, installs drivers and updates, pretty much all typically while the user waits and watches. Next, user personalizations need to be applied, and other applications outside of the base image need to be remediated to that device. So the bottom half of this slide, what we say is Horizon Mirage assists in the most operationally disruptive and labor-intensive part of your Windows 7 migration, which is the deployment. As discussed earlier, the first job a Horizon Mirage client performs is to scan the endpoint and create a central virtual copy, therefore creating a full backup of the end user's endpoint. Once the central copy is available, Mirage provides reporting and that details what's on the device and what effect the base image association will have during a hardware migration scenario. Through the use of logical layers, Horizon Mirage applies the operating system and drivers where appropriate and maintains the user's files and personalizations during the deployment process. The initial delivery of these layers is performed in the background as the user works in XP. Another key differentiator of Horizon Mirage in this situation is that Windows is delivered built with the drivers and personalization intelligently layered on top. So there's no need for that lengthy build process. Once the layers have been staged on the device while the user works, Horizon Mirage will then apply these device and automate the restoration of the device's identity back into Active Directory and get all the applications up and running in a single reboot. The primary focus of Horizon Mirage is to keep the user impact to a minimum and to allow the user to get productive as soon as possible. So traditional imaging solutions deliver a standard image that then boots into a scripted build process, typically based on Microsoft SysPrep. The result is typically multiple reboots and a vanilla instance of Windows with core apps installed, with little or no user personalization. Not only is this process significantly more intrusive than the zero-touch alternative offered by Horizon Mirage, but it all, it's also incomplete and leaves the user with more time to spend getting their machine back to looking like theirs. So of course, there are phases of the migration project that are not addressed by Horizon Mirage. We can always help here, too, if you need to. For application inventory and assessment, for example, VMware has a number of partners in our ecosystem that can help you. For delivering applications to devices, uh, Horizon Mirage application layers provide a fantastic solution for doing this, but we also uh, complement and extend other solutions, such as PC lifecycle management solutions. Horizon Mirage is very good at working with the existing investments that you have. Where appropriate, ThinApp, uh, which is a component of Horizon Mirage, can be used in conjunction with an appropriate delivery mechanism, such as application layers or any industry standard software deployment tool that you've already invested in. So uh, next, I want to describe just briefly what the user experience is like when a, a user is migrated from Windows XP to Windows 7. So using a reference mean, machine, the first thing that IT does is define the configuration and security posture of the Windows image on a single machine that is then subject to the layering we discussed earlier. Once the Mirage client is deployed and the centralization process is complete, the Windows 7 deployment can start. The operating system layer is deployed to the end user's PC in the background, either directly to the PC or via a branch reflector, whilst the user works. So there's no interaction from the user. The end user experience is a key priority for Horizon Mirage. During any process, Mirage automatically throttles its behavior based on the current CPU memory uh, network and disk usage, so that consistent end user experience is guaranteed. In preparation for the Windows 7 deployment, Horizon Mirage automatically creates a snapshot backup of the device to ensure that the entire endpoint is centralized before the deployment begins. Again, this is performed intelligently, only transferring the files that aren't already there in the data center. So once the image has been delivered successfully, the device is now ready to start the Windows deployment. 
The user is prompted to reboot, and when they decide to do this, uh, the process begins. The actual deployment process starts when it boots. Um, Horizon Mirage boots into what we call the pivot phase, which then intelligently merges the Windows 7 layers onto the device's file system. The user, experience, uh, your, the user experiences a minimal amount of downtime, and the device then boots up as a Windows 7 device with the core applications installed, and then the user's profile is maintained. And all of this is performed without the need of infrastructure-heavy imaging servers, without the need for preboot execution environments to be enabled on the device, or for the preboot execution environments to be enabled on the local networks. So what you need to succeed with a Windows 7 migration project uh, when using Horizon Mirage? Well, you probably have lots of PC management plumbing in place, such as PC lifecycle management tools that you use for things like software delivery, inventory, patching, and security, for example. Before you can take full advantage of any new management tools, such as Horizon Mirage, you have to make sure that it fits with your existing investments in other tools and processes. Mirage is infrastructure light. It's designed to manage how the most important aspects of basic productivity are delivered, the operating system, core applications, user personalization, and data. This means that Horizon Mirage can be deployed very easily alongside any existing PC lifecycle management tools that you may have already invested in. The functionality Horizon Mirage, what it offers, will complement and improve, not conflict. Horizon Mirage does not require you to rip out other solutions. It delivers value alone and will enhance the value you already get from your existing capabilities. So with all this in mind, how significant are the savings with Mirage can deliver to your business during a Windows 7 migration? As we've already discussed, Horizon Mirage addresses many use cases that, such as backup, hardware migration, lost and stolen devices, central image management, etc., all of which have a positive impact on your business and keeping users productive. Horizon Mirage also delivers other benefits too, such as investment of dedicated hardware at remote sites can be avoided through the branch reflector technology. And since Mirage does not use preboot execution or Pixie like traditional solutions, there are no costs associated with making sure that A, devices are enabled for PXE, and B, the networks that are, are correctly configured for PXC at all locations. But let's make it simple and ignore all of this and just focus on the labor cost savings in the deployment phase of a Windows migration. These alone are actually very compelling. Uh, this is an example model from a simple ROI tool that we've developed based on some Gartner assumptions of Windows 7 deployment costs. In this example, a customer is migrating a number of devices to Windows 7 and in this case can save around $141,000 on labor costs alone compared to not using Horizon Mirage. So please note once again, this does not take into account any of the cost savings and benefits Horizon Mirage can provide your business, such as full desktop backup solution. This is just focused on the labor costs during the migration project. Uh, VMware's ROI calculator is customizable, so I encourage you to work with your VMware partner or VMware sales rep to use this tool to see what savings that you could achieve during a Windows 7 deployment. So in combination, VMware Horizon View and VMware Horizon Mirage offers a complete solution for your Windows 7 migration project. Horizon View centralizes delivery of Windows image management, enabling security through remote access via a very efficient remote display protocol. This opens up access to Windows PC environments to a, a variety of devices and form factors, such as thin clients and tablets. So by moving Windows 7 into the cloud and then delivering it to people, this allows for some users the ability to migrate to their new environment but have complete flexibility on the devices they want to use. Horizon Mirage offers centralized management of Windows images but delivers this to end users locally and natively on their physical PCs, enabling them to work on or off the network. So this solution is perfect for road warriors and laptop users. And with bi-directional synchronization, IT can update users' PCs when needed and uses a safe in the knowledge that all of the data and applications are securely backed up and re regularly available and to be quickly deployed to another device in the event of a failure. So in summary, IT has control. The user has complete freedom. So this completes the presentation on Windows XP migrations, uh, VMware Horizon Suite, and all of its three components, Horizon View, Horizon Mirage, and Horizon Workspace are available today. Please uh, refer to VMware.com for more information. Um, and thank you very much for your time.